go back to the clips. Adrian was partying on the dance floor. You were partying on the dance floor. I was doing my mission. <laughs> he sat there, grumpy, and said, hey, I want to go home. Okay. I, I, I want to go mate, home. All I remember from that clip is that everyone was waiting for you. And, um, well, well and, wait, uh, wait some more. <laughs> <laughs> Another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck podcast. My name's Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. Ahoy, mateys! Ahoy! That was a lot. No. That was a ton. <laughs> Patrick, the producer of the podcast, behind the glass over there. Avaste ye. Again. Pay attention, motherfucker. It's, <laughs> that's a loose translation from what? What does that mean again? I don't know exactly what it means, Jesus. but I, I didn't understand what he was saying last week. It's avast ye. So it's a vast ye mateys. Depends on what country you're coming from, dude. Like, Fuck you. I yeah. just know pirates from television. We have more <laughs> important things to get to. You've heard uh, two strange voices, but familiar, because we're watching the show that they're on. We are joined by two very special guests, the People's Boson, Ross Inya, and Nick. Uh, he didn't want to do your intro that I wrote no, for I you. <laughs> the Yachty with a Body, My Sienna's yeah. Magic Mike, Ashton Pinar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you heard Yachty with a Body yet? I have not heard that. I like it. <laughs> Change your Instagram handle. That's yeah. a ton. Guys, thank That's you so much for I'm being I'm straight. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to uh, break down this uh, third episode of Below Deck, Bravo's Below Deck, and just fire off some questions. If Anything gets a little too choppy. Boat pun. Nice. Yeah. Boat pun. Boat pun. Uh, we got to come up with a safe word. You guys got to tell us. Can't talk about that. Can't say anything about that. So we're deciding between port and starboard. <laughs> I just am not sure which one we want to go with. <laughs> I, I like port. I think port's cool. Port, port. You can say it a bunch real quick. Are you guys okay with that? So, so port. Let's, go, let's go with port. If you can't answer, just yell port. Okay. Port. Um, port. <laughs> <laughs> Port. Star- <laughs> okay. Port, you're abu- you're ab- if you abuse the safe word, that's how someone gets hurt. Yes, it's going to be a rough podcast if we're just getting ports all the time. Um, guys, when did you uh, get off Captain Lee's My Sienna? So we left My Sienna, what was it, end of March? End of March, yeah. Yeah, end okay. of March. And how long were you on that yacht for? Six, seven seven six weeks? weeks? Six to seven weeks. Yes. Ugh. Now, we may be into port territory already, but please just tell us why Captain Lee's crying in the promo. Did somebody get their leg chopped off? What happened? Ports! <laughs> um, Ross? Oh, you know this, yeah. <laughs> port, um, port, you gotta take it. All right, well, at least we know Ashton and Ross are still alive and have all their limbs. Yeah, um, that, that is really good Good to see. Are you guys ready to get into this here episode? Well, I have a couple more questions. Oh, yeah, Pat, go ahead. We were uh, we were saying, on this show, one of the tropes is you guys are just working for tips, and then you bitch, uh, give horrible service for the whole charter, <laughs> and then you got your hand out, and when you get your tip, you all sit and backstab and bitch uh, at the ge- about the guests that drop 10 grand a day. Holy Here, here's my question. Here's my question. Mate. Do you guys get paid besides the tips? Okay. I, when it comes to tips, I'm grateful for anything that I get. Obviously, my mate over here, um, there's, um, you know, he's had previous experience when it comes to um, receiving tips. Um, yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody ever in um, on this planet that's happy with receiving sorry, just Sorry, before the I tip? was really interrupted. <laughs> Before I was really un- interrupted, um, yeah. I was trying to get my point across. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm very. Is that, is that what you work with? Just the points? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about tips here, bro. Jeez. <laughs> Not just points. <laughs> well, Answer the question. Are you guys paid besides when, the tips? Yeah. When yes, we talk about we tips in that aspect, um, that's what I usually tell them just a tip. Um, little do they know it's uh, all the way in. But, anyways. <laughs> Lots of penis. A lot of dick talk you, right you out said of the it, gate. Ross. You a said it. A lot of dick talk right <laughs> out of the gate. I take that back. Um, you know, it's strange because I'm usually the one who is rude to guess but pat you really kicked it off right <laughs> yeah. pat do you have any other questions uh oh yeah yeah okay okay uh captain lee and kate are the stars they've been on for five years or whatever i want to ask are they basically not really doing a lot during the actual filming of the charter and then just show up to for like kate just to show up in the kitchen and give her nah. critique of the food no actually i'll talk on behalf of kate um Kate is an amazing worker. She she's very knowledgeable. Um, she's very good at what she does. 
um, she's a hard worker. She puts in the hours, um, the time, the effort, and um, no, she do, yeah, she does a great job. Um, yeah, she can come across, uh, you know, people may perceive her in a different way, but Mama uh, bear. the thing I like her about her is she's straightforward and she's straight up and she's yeah. to the point. She's there's no bullshit with her, and and actually that's the same for Captain Lee. Um, there's no the hold on. Do you want to talk about the whole show tonight? <laughs> is, is this going to be the Ross show or can I get a word in? <laughs> well, I, guess- know, I said this coming up is fucking, we, we're going to struggle to get Ross to shut up. This whole <laughs> well, Ashton, let me ask you this. So, are they working the full day like you guys are? Absolutely. And, oh, wow. And you know what? Me coming in as, as uh, the newbie to the show, it was absolutely amazing to, to meet Captain Lee and he. He was a, a true captain. From the, the moment we came on board, he made himself visible. Uh, he introduced himself to us. Um, and he, he was he was involved in every Look step of the process show. through through the whole show. <laughs> so he's he, he's definitely... He, Pat's just playing a clip from Captain <laughs> Phillips right now. <laughs> Why? I don't know, but he is. He's a captain. <laughs> in, in any case, to to nip to nip any any rumors in the Jesus. bud that Captain Lee is this uh, actor that comes in and 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 just kind of acts as a captain. Absolutely not. He drives the boat uh, by himself. He is an experienced captain, and and he deserves all the respect for that. Um, I'm gonna give a little peek behind the curtain while Ashton was talking. <laughs> Ross was miming, licking an asshole. Oh, oh man. All right. You know right. what, guys? Uh, one, one, last, I, one, one last question Potty before we get talk. into the show, because all right, in the episode, not to get ahead of myself, you guys were eating out of fucking Tupperware containers while the, uh, all the guests were eating all the good food, right? That's how we do it. All right. <laughs> do you guys eat the food that Adrian was preparing? You guys get the leftovers? No. Why do you think? We were in the um, kitchen. What? what? No, right, what? Look, hold on. Uh, Adrian, Adrian prepares separate meals for the crew th- than he does for the guests. So the guests get get their food, and there's absolutely no ways that we eat their leftovers. He prepares a separate meal for us that goes out before the guest food goes out. Wow. Um, Ro- Ross likes to hang around in the galley to get the scraps from the guests, but uh, I don't know. I think that's just an NZ thing. I don't know. Oh, definitely. You know, we don't want to. Th- you don't. We don't want to waste food. Oh, know? absolutely um, not. Yeah. You know, a, a shame for South Africa. You know, it's it's a pity. Uh, I'm not even gonna go there because <laughs> I just said that. I'm sorry. No, hey, hey, you that, just went there. That's you a just great. Went there. That's a great segue. Uh, fans of this podcast will know that Nick has a fan favorite list segment that I can't fucking stand. So here we go. Yeah. So I, I do. I do a list every week. Um, I told you guys we had Lily McManus, who is from also from Down Under. Lily, so, hey, Lily. Uh, she's a, she was a uh, bachelor contestant. It's our it's other whatever, property. Yeah. She's just an awesome Kiwi. Yeah, she's, she, but she, it turns out she was actually from Australia. But I, <laughs> I, I, I thought, I, <laughs> no, trust, trust Ross to claim that one. Oh, she was a Kiwi. No, she's, she says she says New Zealand's her adopted home, and in her honor, I rank the top five Kiwis. Uh, <coughs> this week, my list uh, in honor of uh, you, you were six. You just missed the list. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this week, my uh, my list is notable moments in South African history. Uh, okay, so oh, let, wow, here we go. Let's here just we go. let's just jump right into it. Number belts. <laughs> number three on February fourteenth, two thousand thirteen. Uh, by the date, do you know where I'm going with this? <laughs> wait, wait, Great, question. Yeah, <laughs> Great question. Great question. Two thousand thirteen. Uh, what color undies were you wearing? Here it comes. <laughs> here it comes. Uh, the Blaine Rudder, the fastest man with no legs, Oscar Oz Pistorius oh, shoots and kills. <laughs> Shoots and kills his gr- his girlfriend, South African model Riva Stinkamp. Yeah, yeah, that, that was big. Yeah, yeah, that, that was and, huge. And, and you know, it's like all jokes aside, that was sad. Well, that was honestly sad. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. Know. yeah. we know. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Uh, the, the the number two the comedy from did you guys did you guys ever watch that Australian comedian um, Jim Jeffries? We yeah, love Jim. Oh my God, he's a fucking. He's dude. really funny. He's 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 a he's, lot guns. He's been in this very studio, not on our show, but many times. Oh. Um, and actually, uh, what a legend! We had that segment that he did. About can you can you talk into a mic, bro? Or, 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 did <laughs> you, do, do we need to write your instructions guys, on, and, in front of you? Uh, listen, so I'm I not don't used to having something like this in front of my face. Like <laughs> no, no, no. I know it's it's a little strange, but I don't want to be rude. But we have to get to number two <laughs> on this list. Sorry. Okay. And and I uh, by the way, I know that is a sad event, but the comedy comes from this is supposed to be a comedy podcast and me talking about tragedy. Number two from 19, <laughs> 1948 oh, to nineteen ninety four. 
Uh, yeah, that that's a pause. Ace. Yeah, that is a part time. He got number two. Uh, I think that people are pretty familiar with that one. Number one, June twenty first, nineteen ninety one. I'm sure you don't know the date. Uh, what that is from the date. Charlie Theron's alcoholic father is shot and killed in self defense by Charlie's mother after he threatened to attack them in a drunken rage. And South African history is marred by tragedy. This is why I love wow. Nick's lists. They're wow. s- they're they're just. They're so bubbly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Anyways, we can move on. Jesus <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to have a sip of my beer. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Same. You know, South Africa is known for a lot, uh, you know, a lot of other stuff like sharks. Rugby. And- oh, no, that's New Zealand. Oh. Yeah. I said the All Blacks the other day. They looked at me like they didn't know what they were talking what I was talking about. Anyways, we got to get on to this show. Bravo's <laughs> Below Deck. Um, last week, we left off with um, Chandler the Light Sleeper. And Riley, the <laughs> captain, having the 6 a.m. Captain Alaska. Yes. Captain Alaska. The, uh, the 6 a.m. blow up. Um, we talked about it last week. Ross, you handled this like a beautiful brown knight trying <laughs> to. Uh, uh, I'd like to say golden 10, but. Carry got on. it. Yep. Sorry. Um, <laughs> trying Bronze. to talk <clears throat> Chandler off a ledge. Now, we were wondering where Ashton was uh, throughout this entire ordeal. Do you guys want to let us know what happened to him? Yeah, so um, I had actually spoken to Ashton um, <laughs> before he had come downstairs, and I'd and I'd given uh, not I wouldn't say orders. I'd say like I'd asked Ashton a suggestion, suge- like when you come downstairs, it was pretty. I I pretty told yeah. No, look, uh, R- R- Ross Ross has had my back from the beginning. Yes, is uh, and and we've kind of had this this relationship. Second, you popped that shirt off. He was. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've had this relationship uh, through the season, and and it'll become more apparent as the show goes on. Is Ross has my back in in a lot of circumstances, and and vice versa. And this was one of those circumstances where he knew that there was drama going on between two other deck crew, and he just knew, you know, in in the state that I was in in my whole party boy state, that if I had gone down into the crew mess, seeing what was going on, I was probably going to get caught up in it and and not do myself any favors. Yeah. And I have the utmost appreciation for for Ross for warning me from the get go and having the foresight to actually see what would have what would have happened. Yeah, you would have and, hooked and up he, with he Josiah. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> he literally just said to me, "Look, he grabbed me outside. He said, I want you to go down. You pass the crew mess, and you go straight to our cabin. <laughs> you, you don't even look left or right. You just go straight to your cabin. Yeah, don't engage with anybody. Guardian angel. And, and, and I'm I'm thankful for it because uh, like I, I would have got caught up in all, all that drama, and it, it wouldn't have looked bad. It wouldn't have looked good on on on, on myself or anybody else. No. And, and Riley did not take that same advice. No, she did not, and she was grasping at straws for anybody who would get on her side. Kate was not one of them. Pat, do you have a clip? Yeah, I'm gonna and blow up if I'm being and spoken to like a maybe I'm just misunderstanding the whole way Point. he asked I understand what happened but now you're the only person here raising your voice and if I were you I would go to sleep because you have to be on deck at 6 a.m. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do I can say whatever the I want to say so then it's okay to speak to people disrespectfully? I'm confused. Are you or are you just being condescending? Just don't dig a hole deeper. I would just stop. I think Riley's a little bit confused. She has no yachting experience and she needs to respect everyone else above her. And everyone else is above her. What a burn. Now, hold on. I have some thoughts on this. Uh, they may be controversial, but I, based on everything that I saw, uh, what, what took place the, when you guys were all partying on the island, Riley was 100% right in her argument, but it's one of these cases where she articulated it so poorly and got dragged into the mud, she annoyed everybody. Her her ar- argument, if you break it down, is he Chandler on the island really said, I'm not your boss tonight, and then he became your boss, and then he became a power-hungry, red-nosed fucking drunk. And started barking <laughs> orders like, oh, now that you're all going to pay for this, you're all going to pay for this and you're all going to wake up at 6 a.m., which is a power hungry dick move. And she was right in saying that. It's just she did not articulate her uh, position. well. I completely agree with you. And I wanted to ask you, boys, um, in general, how is Chandler? Because, again, I don't know if you guys can speak freely about this, but I think he looks at worst like a serial killer and at best a passive aggressive asshole. Now, this you guys may be good friends with him, but he just comes across as a big old dickhead. And again, uh, Ch- uh, Chandler, we'd love to have you in. 
Chandler, if you're listening. <laughs> stop by if you're listening. I, I think Chandler's being portrayed at, as this this big monster that that is very out of line and has no leadership skills. Um, I think Chandler had. It. Ro- Ross, do you want to you want to chime in? <laughs> what aren't we seeing on the boat, guys? Oh, in so, filming. So what it is is that um, you know you okay you join a yacht, you've got one day to learn everything on the boat. You know, it's it's a stressful job. It's a hard job to be able to come on the boat, learn the boat in one day. You can't learn a boat in one day. Like who's kidding? You, you have to have experience. Exactly, you have to have experience. You've got Riley. It's like you know, it's it's okay to ask questions and it's okay to ask for help. I think I might be going off topic here, and I might be going to my own well, way. But no, you're justifying his frustration because she's starting his, from ground okay, zero. So his frustration is that when you're a junior deckhand and you join a yacht, okay, she's been a captain on a fishing boat. Right, that's so different. Big fish she's catching though. Big uh, fish. Yeah, big yeah, fish. R- r- monsters r- of antiquity. Look, Monster, monsters of antiquity. Look, respect. You know, the fish she catches are massive. Big fish. And yes, exactly. <laughs> but this is this is not Alaska. Right. This is Tahiti. This is Tahiti. And you're on a, a million, two million, what, $50 million yacht. Yeah. It, it's, it's vastly different. Yeah, but guys, it's, when he said, you're all going to pay for this now based on something that someone else did, don't you think that you was out of line? you did. Like, he, I, I Look, can't. Look, uh, I, I want to chime in here. If, if I want to go out on my first night out and I want to party... Yeah. That onus is on me. Yeah. Okay. I do not expect and I am not responsible for the rest of my crew. Right. Okay. When when you in your normal office job, and let's compare this to an office job. If you're in an office job and you knock off at five five PM, yeah. your boss does not go out with you and then say or when she sees you drunk at twelve PM, say, Hey, instead of you being back at the office at eight PM or eight AM, you gotta be back now at six six AM. Yeah. That doesn't happen. No. Okay. Neither should it happen on a yacht. Right. Right. The punishment should so, happen if is if the call is eight a.m. and because you got drunk you don't make it. Then there should be consequences, and, and, not just staying and out. If if I'd got told from the get go before we got out that I had to be up on deck at six a.m., I would not have been so free spirited in the club as I was. <laughs> I would have had had a lot more like a very chilled evening, and I would have been like, cool. So, I'll, be, I'll be ready for 6, 6 a.m. So F you, Chandler. Yeah, so screw you, Chandler. You're yes. a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, on TV, no. I'm sure you he's know, great in person. You know, in person, yeah. In person, on TV, it's been perceived this way. And, and you got yes, to yes, give us some drama. He, he made, you know, obviously there's going to be a couple of things in the future where I pop into the situation. Because I, I, know, I know where you're going with this in terms of backing Chandler up. And I will back Chandler up. And you will also back Chandler up <laughs> where, where it's necessary. <laughs> that night... He, he was a little bit out of line because we were yeah. out all having a party. And g- go back to the clips. Adrian was partying on the dance floor. You were partying on the dance floor. I was doing my mission. <laughs> he sat there grumpy and said, hey, I want to go home. Okay. I, I, I want to hey, go mate, home. All I remember from that clip is that everyone was waiting for you. And, um, well, well and, wait, uh, wait some more. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, Ashton, I was 100% with you. That, play, that place bro, was popping that bro. night. Every time Ashton came to me and asked me for advice about that, I said, I, all, I would always say, cuz I do not give a fuck if <laughs> what the fuck you do away from work as long as your ass is on deck at 8 o'clock in the morning. And, and, and that, that's and the reasonable. point. reasonable. That's the point. I, I would, I do not care. If you, I, I egged him on to go have fun. I was like, bro, go hook up with that chick, bro. Go, go hook up with that chick. I wasn't getting... Anything at that time, you know, I was I was being uh, respectful, you know, as usual, humble as as, as <laughs> I am. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, we 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 got it. R- R- Ross is just slow out of the gates. That's yeah. all. Yeah. We got to we got to move on from this. But one more question about that night: What happened when that girl asked if you were gay? Yeah, Ashton? what happened? What, what happened there? What happened there? <laughs> Can I be honest? I'm still trying to figure well, it out. Look, yeah. <laughs> look at him. I, 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 you I, I've, I've you worked gay. it down. Hey. Two two gay guys are very well groomed and yep. they look after themselves, yep. and yep. I'm going with that. Yeah. She looked at me, she's like... a compliment. Like, you know that's how it. I'm, I'm taking it as a compliment. Yep. It might be egotistical, but there's no other reason for her to have asked me if I'm gay or not. <laughs> yeah. did, did you see how shocked I was? I, was yeah. like, I, I, I did the double look. I did the double take. Yes. I was like, boom, boom. I was like, what um, did you just say? Well, <laughs> I do want to say one, one last thing before we move on. I think the entire thing stemmed from... Uh, we talked about it. you guys had done nothing wrong. If you had not gotten to uh, gotten up at eight, then there would have been a problem. He was the one who had fucked up that day. 
and you, you, you know, we can't go back to it. You had heaps, <laughs> we move heaped on. praise I on you in that meeting. Well, well, um, actually, uh, Chandler had come to my room and he said, "Hey, cuz you don't have to be up at six o'clock. You can be up at eight o'clock on deck." Do you remember that? And that's why when you see the clip of um, me talking to Ashton about your ass needs to be up at five, like set your alarm for five forty-five. Because I'm like, hey, I don't give a fuck. You you piss Chandler off. Set your alarm at five forty-five. I did not have to. Like he had come to me and said, um, you didn't have to be up at eight. So maybe I got some special treatment there. Um, I'm not too sure. Bravo. Wow. wow. More, more, no pun intended. A lot of time <laughs> on six a.m. gate. Um, <laughs> It is did, did he at least lube you up before he gave you that special when? treatment? There we go again, <laughs> guys. <laughs> we still, like when? I said, they are buddies. When did Oz? <laughs> um, we have to move on. We'll scoot right past uh, Carolyn's super depressing call about uh, early onset dementia uh, that her mother uh, yeah, no, is nothing, suffering through. Nothing funny about that. Just horrific, and I feel terrible for her. We I, wish her the best. I wish her the best. I, I hope all good for her, you know? Yeah. Um, like how they're portraying things is is not how I want to see it and um well and it's I, safe I to say she went through a lot worse than did. what you guys went through yeah and um, she's, she's going sure. through a lot in, uh, in, sure. her, in her outside life on, I, I wish her all the best on to uh, uh calmer waters funnier waters I don't know um the last time these charter guests came on this here boat they had a terrible time culinarily speaking um somebody tried to put grenadine in an oyster and uh, Adrian <laughs> is not one to do that because he's a phenomenal chef. Yeah, right. But um, <laughs> I want to ask, has he tried to fuck either one of you? Not at all. Are you sure? <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> I feel like he we have talked is the whole going time. to have sex with everyone on that boat by the end of the Man, season. Man, woman, does not matter. Doesn't we matter. have talked about how he is just a sexual being. And shocker of the season, in an open relationship. Pat, do you have a clip? I'm in an open relationship with my girlfriend. You know, I'm not ready to commit for a lifelong relationship. I'm very passionate about life and all its forms. I love the pleasures of the flesh, as you would say. Can Shocking. I, can I just say how much I love that Frodo-looking <laughs> motherfucker? Yeah. He is such he's a... He's fantastic. He's a delight. Yeah. Cheers, Pat. I usually... I, I usually think open relationships will just never work out. Uh, uh, human beings are way too jealous, but... Astral projections like Adrian and his girlfriend are probably going to figure it he's out. He's so calm. He's like he's like a hypnotist the way he calms, yeah, yeah, calms yeah. the water. He's a yogi. Adrian, uh, he's a special man. <laughs> uh, and and I, I think you'll see as, as the season goes on is uh, myself, Ross, and Adrian get quite close because we, we, we start spending quite a bit of time in the Getty. And I was there to, for the to, food. To, to be honest, I, I'm blown away by his... His confidence, where he draws his inspiration from for his dishes. It could be a tapestry on the wall. It could it's, be the scent of his it, grandmother's it house. It is absolutely incredible because, yeah. you know, <laughs> cooking cooking and planning the way that he does, for me, just seems so stressful. And he's just so chill, yeah. so mellow. Well, his third eye he is just, wide open. He just, na- everything is wide open with Adrian. <laughs> yeah. But especially his third eye. <laughs> Can I ask, has there been any devil's triangle between you, uh, you uh, Adrian, uh, uh, and <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> if, if, if anything, he's he's a wingman that you want on your side am, when you go out. I am oh, so honestly, surprised. The, the man is just so censored. He's just he's just so, so grounded. So, he really is cool. So going about being a wingman, um, me and Adrian <laughs> actually come up with this saying called Octa Snake," and uh, there's a, you know you you see uh, you know <laughs> port, <we> port port <laughs> port port. <laughs> Port. <laughs> Sounded uh, phallic. I, I, think, I think you're giving away too much info here. Sounded bro. phallic. Let's move on. I just I, on. am shocked that Let's neither on. one of you <laughs> so came Great to use his. of port. Um, <laughs> all I'll say is... Um, port's on. <laughs> port's on. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move on to Riley and Chandler. Can, Chandler's kind of... He just contradicts himself a lot. He says that he does not have the mental capacity to deal with whatever's going to come out of Riley's mouth. But let's go have a conversation. It doesn't go well because it seems like... No conversation with Riley goes well because we have a clip. <laughs> Last night, I think some things were said that both of us probably regret. You know, I did not handle that situation as well as I should have. So I apologize for that. We're good. But if anything happens like that again, the disrespect, I mean, would you talk to Captain like that? I'm confused because when you told me to shut up, I shut up. 
and then it carried on into the crew mess for another hour and a half. I'm not sure where I spoke to you disrespectfully. I don't have time for this petty stuff on the side. I'm here to work. You don't have to like me, but you will respect me. Yeah, right? Yes, sir. You don't have to love me. <laughs> but you will respect me. But you will respect me. Oh. You know why? You know why? That's why. Because that's why. Because Rob. Right. He's obviously oh. a big fan of Khalees. <laughs> As we all are, are. My neck, my back. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Respect people's bosun. What's the question? <laughs> Huge fan. I, I think that the... The crux of the issue with Riley is the the her philosophy. She says it in that clip um, that she's no one is going to get respect from her. You have to earn it, and and that's that's how it should be. I agree with her in that aspect. Okay. Or, but but it sounds like she should immediately respect you guys because you're more knowledgeable and she's the lowest on the totem pole. And that's where my second book was coming. <laughs> <laughs> But it seems like that's the that's the main source of all the ire. I, I don't want to keep hammering this point, but a lot of these problems are stemming from Chandler talking out of both sides of his mouth. Yeah. In the beginning, he said there's no hierarchy, yeah. and then when someone acts like there's no hierarchy and talks to him like a peer rather than a superior, so, ear, uh, then nice, there's problems. Nice. When he's when he says I'm not your boss off the boat, and then he act like you're not his. Okay. Yeah, so Okay, so so when you come to a team you don't wanna have hierarchy. You don't wanna have these levels of I'm the bosun, you're the lead deck. You, you don't wanna come in hot headed. You wanna come and stamp your authority mm -hmm. in. You, you wanna, wanna come be in a easy. Team player, yeah. Okay. You wanna come you wanna try incorporate the group as a team player. This should not be in hierarchy. That's and that's how I've always looked at it. I, I respect Chandler in that way. He didn't wanna come in hot headed, he didn't wanna come in acting like he was superior. But it didn't work. But the thing is, is that he didn't know what he was dealing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that's the point. Is Chana came in with a game plan to be like, I'm going to be the cool bosun. I'm going to be chilled, right? And I want to handle my team and let let me learn about my team and let's take things from there. Then he gets <laughs> Riley, the Alaskan captain. Well, well, that's it. Who is obviously very hot headed and and very vocal, yeah, on her points of view, which which is okay. And I think it just caught him off guard. Um, you know, completely threw him off. And I think, you know, I, I've, been, I've been watching the, the last three episodes and and in the show, I must be honest, I was like, you know, Chandler's not leading us. He's not giving us much direction as a bosun. But watching the show, I'm actually like, Chandler, I get completely where you're coming from. Just failed. Is No, he didn't just fail. The fact that he had to deal with Riley and the way that she came across made things a whole lot more challenging for him. And I put myself in his shoes. If I had someone as aggressive and some someone as emotional and someone as just strong-headed as Riley... Sharp it teeth. It, it would have also thrown me off. Yeah, if he would have had uh, a crew full of you two, then I think things would have operated pretty, pretty oh, smoothly. It's been a pretty boring exactly. show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boring. Fair, fair. Yeah, and I, I don't want to just, you, just you know, pile on Riley. We'll, yeah. we'll do that throughout like, the entire show. But she does get riled up pretty easily. Well, actually, you notice on the show, I was going to ask these guys. I made a note because oh, okay. you guys were coming in. Was <laughs> you guys seem pretty annoyed with Riley? Although I was on her side, I thought it was Chandler versus Riley, and you guys would kind of rally behind her. And she asked a lot of questions while she's scrubbing the deck and shit. And I can tell you guys are both kind of more on Chandler's well, side throughout the episode. Well, did you see the scene when we were down in the crew mess, and I actually approach Riley, and I say, I tell Riley, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And I actually talk to Riley, and, and I want to actually understand where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. You guys only see 2% of what's actually shot. Right. And, and and what's actually edited. Um, you know, Riley Riley came onto this in, into this as she was hired as a third deck as a junior deckhand. She wasn't hired as a captain. She wanted respect because she was a captain. Unfortunately on this yacht you are hired as a junior deckhand. Mm -hmm. You're not a captain. 
Just like you were a bosun and you, but yeah. you weren't hired as a bosun. Okay, and did I ever step on Chandler's toe? Absolutely not. No, no. Okay. in episode one, I thought you guys were going to be at each other's throats because of that. But Actually, what I'm shocked by this meeting, you guys, is how much pride you take in your work. I, I always assume they basically had part-time people that were in this business and they hired you to be good TV. In actuality, you guys got on this show and you actually give a fuck about your jobs. I joined this boat to prove a point that, um, so I, I hope it comes across that like, and and Ashton will even say like I I came to this boat because because yachties are perceived in a way that when we join the show we're we're looked upon we're like oh you know they make us look bad blah 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 I like, referred to them as millennial gypsies <laughs> exactly exactly <Yeah. laughs> and so I agree with that I wanted to try it wasn't a goal yeah it was a goal of mine I was like okay we my- we, we just wanted to rectify a bad perception that the people that come on below deck are actors and floating. Well, that's it. No, and I think I think I think you two specifically and Adrian uh, are doing a fantastic job. And Josiah. And, Thank and, you. Oh, Josiah. and Josiah and and oh yeah, fin- yeah. Actually, and everybody sure. except for the two crazy broads. <laughs> Thank you. Fair. <laughs> fair. fair. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, you can port this if you want, but it, um, is Riley the worst person you have ever worked with on a boat? In my perspective, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and, uh, and, and I said yes quickly because in my mind I was saying have I worked with anybody worse in the last two years in my head no okay. she was the worst but when I say she was the worst I don't mean she's the worst person right yeah, exactly she she was a challenge okay and yep. you will see later on in the season Ross and I are trying to figure out how to manage this challenge is she is just very different yeah, she comes from a different background to what we used to. She doesn't wear bras, and, and you know that's okay. <laughs> yes, nipples yeah, cool. are out all Neither the time. Neither does Ashton. But. <laughs> she she is just different and comes from a different background. But we do appreciate the strengths that she does bring to the team, and that's what I try to work with. Um, I I always look at people's strengths, and um, she she came. She was she she's such a hard worker, and I and I express that a lot. In my interviews, that she is such a strong-minded woman, and I respect that. And she's such a hard worker. What I don't respect is her attitude. And if people like people are condes- like people are saying, I'm like misogynist. Uh, exactly, misogynist. If you if you look at really, I don't know. You're getting what, there? Uh, if you're not, watching so have the, you not? Have you not seen if it? If you're not watching, I, I, Twitter clips, has blown up with what twenty or thirty I'm percent aggressive. of people saying that I'm we are misogynists and that we are treating Riley differently because she's a female. That's and, insanity. And it, well, it, it I, makes I me wanted, sick to my core. I wanted to ask you guys, do you think at any point, and we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, do you think at any point you guys were too hard on her? Never, ever. We, I, we, we were too soft on her. Tell them how. We were too soft on her. I, w- and, no, and I, I was too I, soft I, no, on her. Yes, you were. And I, I took Ross on about this. Is You'll also see later on in the season, <laughs> I tell Ross to his face, you have created this monster. Yeah. <laughs> because Ross tiptoed around Riley so much yeah. that he created this person that thought that she could speak up to her superior. Follow-up question. Uh, Ashton, did you bet her? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. I thought we were I getting a port. I poor. No. Uh. All right, so this is, poor, what's, poor, poor. <laughs> this is what's interesting about the show is that episode one, they're setting up like how the, the this uh, this season would go typically, which is all the hookups, and they're setting Riley up to bang Ashton. And then in episode two, when someone has to pick a side, Ashton's like, Riley's being disrespectful to the, the bosun. Like, no, that's not right. And typically in the old episodes, it'd be like, okay. he'd go in the, the room with her and go, yeah, he is a dickhead, let's fuck. Okay, we're talking about- <laughs> It would have been an easy move. We're talking <laughs> about two different things here. We're talking about work-wise and we're talking about <laughs> going out-wise. There's well, there's two vast- Well, don't let Chandler throw that right. out. You'll be, he'll be fucking right, someone to so, go, hey, now I'm the boss. <laughs> so we, we obviously learned from the first night we went out with Ashton when uh, no one would- allow him to bring people back to the boat he's a whirling dervish so you know you've got options you know <laughs> you know this person's taken this person's taken you guys uh, are all business there's but one person you do the math but okay bro. we only three three episodes in we'll, we'll be doing the math at episode seven <laughs> <laughs> all right uh we got to move on to the guests arriving on my sienna um 
They get on and you guys are lining up. And I don't know if this was real or not. I don't know if he was joking around. But oh, what is this real. toe line Ch- thing? Chandler lining us up. What the fuck is that? That was real. That was as real as fucking anything could be. Does he have any <laughs> military background? Like, this is not buds. You know, I don't look, know what the fuck uh, this I'm is. Let me I, remind I, the audience of what we're talking about. Chandler insists that the entire crew meet the guests and have all their feet exactly aligned with a piece of wood. And then, like a goddamn basset hound, goes up and down the line and looks left and right like everybody's supposed to be on the same line. It's absolutely insane. You know, you know. I'll say it, gentlemen. He's a psychopath. <laughs> How small is that motherfucker's dick? It's the size of a fucking tic Easy. Easy. No. Easy. No. That Easy. is so rude. We want to have Tate and Josiah in here. No, wait a minute. It's me saying. They're not going into the military. <laughs> they're not getting on one of those boats uh, storming a goddamn beach. They're meeting some people that are going to eat some fucking food for the next two days. He's acting like a jerk, and I'm going to say it. <laughs> uh, you know, the funny thing is, is when we were lining up, my bro size eyesight's a bit cockeyed, a bit like when... Um, there's, a, there's an episode <laughs> where he's hooking up with the chick and he's like, oh, you're so beautiful. And I'm like, oh, mom. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, obviously the bro was on the wrong line when we were lining up. But um, when it comes to lines, um, oh, no, sorry. You take it. <laughs> Habitual line crosser, I guess we're saying. Ashton, what, what the fuck is your problem? You can't, you can't line up? <laughs> All right, let's move on. So, uh, <laughs> um... Uh, <laughs> you and, and Riley get into a little uh, uh, I'm calm, you're not calm fight <laughs> um, when you're unloading the stanchion in the blocks. I don't know what the fuck that means. But, um, <laughs> what is a, a stanchion and what's a block? So <laughs> This can be quick because it is not interesting. Quick. <laughs> this can be quick. Look, or you the, can not answer it at all so, and we can move on. <laughs> so Muriotiana had like blocks that the stanchions fit into. And the the stanchions are not all the same, so yeah, I think we can sta- move on. Certain stanchions had to go into certain blocks. This she, isn't on she, you. It was a horrible yeah, question. Terrible <laughs> question. <laughs> Let's Team move on. meeting has to be held, and um, guys, there's luggage upstairs. Honestly, that was not like me and Chan. Me and uh, sorry, Ashton. We were looking at each other. Like we we could we we wanted to respond, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not our place, especially in that team meeting about we, people's places. I, exactly, right, right, we right, looked right. at Irony. each other and we were like, "Should we go? Should we go?" <laughs> well, but I wanted to ask you: Is Lee listening to everything that's going on over the walkie? So every, everybody in the crew is connected to the walkie. Okay. So if somebody makes a call, it goes through the entire crew. If he's okay. on the right channel, right. So you don't want to hear. You don't. You guys don't want to have Captain Lee hearing hearing a, hearing a request not multiple at all. times. Not at all. Whew. Bad move, Chandler. Jesus, He's a terrifying Look, man. With okay, a okay, tiny but hold on. That, that that's one perspective. Yeah, I want to give you another perspective. Sure. Is when the whole stanchion shindig was going on, guests guests were on the main deck aft and heard what, what was going on, and there was a lot of bickering going on. So what led to that meeting taking place is the fact that the crew were having arguments and bickering happening in the face of the guests, and that is why Chandler called that meeting when he did he wanted yeah. to nip it in the bud so in in Chandler's defense yeah, exactly. i'm not I'm, I'm not saying it was the right call because because it was look yeah yeah it wasn't because there was still luggage in it freaking luggage okay but there was issues on the deck and there were were fem- there were issues that needed to be addressed you misogynist <laughs> <laughs> hey I'm yes i've heard that so many times over twitter this yeah, week so you know what just, just say it again you guys just are too sensitive below you guys are on reality television for the first time you're getting shit on on social media for the first time just Brush it off the shoulders. Don't worry about it. Let's move on uh, to what Nick has said very often uh, off mic and right. on mic. Very quickly. I, yes. We talked about... Uh, Not another list. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, I just want to give these guys a quote. Uh, and this is from Bruce Lee. You will continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that is said to you. True power is sitting back and observing everything with logic. Yeah. If sure. words control you, For that sure. means everyone else can control you. Yeah. Breathe and allow things to pass. And, and fuck Can I that. tell you what it's Preach called? Preaching the goddamn that's, choir. That's how Ross lives his goddamn life. I'm uh, three episodes deep on this motherfucker, and he's living that. Preach, Ross. Preach. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. And this guy's think, playing ping pong with nung chubs. <laughs> okay. <What>? So, <laughs> Flicking marbles. <laughs> Sorry, I just read that today. It seemed relevant. Uh, I would <laughs> like to uh, say a quote of my own. And uh, this is from one real Nicholas Davis. 
Mother Nature knows no class. <laughs> uh, we've got a windstorm uh, during a massage session. <laughs> Guys, um, when the season starts off, Captain Lee is concerned about the weather and the reef uh, going on in Tahiti. How bad does it get out there? I mean, is that is that does that Nick, happen often? Nick, you, you've got when you're coming into a channel. Yeah, I mean, the whole of Tahiti is surrounded by reef. Yeah, when you're coming in, you've got ten to fifteen meters, which is what ninety to a hundred hundred foot. On on other side, there's minimal minimal space for for error. You know, and when weather comes in, visibility is low. Um, uh, this is this is why you couldn't drive a straight pin up Captain Lee's ass with a ten pound sledgehammer, a nineteen foot Boom. sledgehammer. Boom. <laughs> um, all, I got it. Um, I'm I'm too fascinated by the uh, yacht talk. But anyways, go ahead. Pat. Oh, oh, I want to when the guests come on. One of the things because there's nothing to do on that goddamn boat. You got to serve them lunch, guys. Are we gonna gloss over the first lunch? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely Please. not. <laughs> absolutely uh, not. Let's dive into Ad the first meal we see from Adrian tonight. Uh, he gives a roasted chicken breast on a bed of pearl couscous and arugula salad with a nice lemon ranch. Ooh, Any bum fancy. can cook this meal. <laughs> <laughs> he is so critical. We've talked many times how I'm podunk trash from the Midwest. This all seems just fantastic to me. It's very, there's not a lot there. So, so Nick, you, you say you could cook it. But mm -hmm. but let me let me put you. His in name is Dylan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, you, I'm, Nick. <laughs> I wanted to keep that going Dylan, the entire time. You know how to make a lemon ranch. Well, so, so, so hold on. Of you, course, you, I know how to make you, a lemon. You ranch. can cook that. Kind of question is that Ross? But you're cooking it in a confined space. Yeah. In a boat's galley. Yeah. Dealing with drama yeah. of the whole fucking crew. Yeah. Come on. He's a give, bum. Give the guy some props. He no. Does, he does very well in keeping himself very level headed. And he, he spits out dishes that the guests Off the chew up. Head. Well, in pleasure. But like the lady, who, let, let's be like honest. Let's be honest. Said she wouldn't eat baby veal or something like that. And, and she, she fucking chewed that shit like oh a baby. Oh my god, cough. she was munching yeah. it like she'd munch. Oh, he, um, he wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> he wrapped veal around asparagus. What a what a whiz. Now, Jesus, Dylan. <laughs> I don't think that's the only thing he wrapped something around. But anyways, now, uh, guys, I don't want to pile on because yeah. I, I don't know anything about food. But I I'm an alcoholic, so I know a lot about wine. I visit <laughs> Napa, uh, the San Yez Valley, multiple times a year. Coppola. There was a bottle. Coppola. Of Pinot Noir Coppola. Trash. Which I have had multiple <laughs> times is that the one? in Napa. It's trash wine. Is that the uh, one? Thank you, Dylan. That is uh, $19 a bottle. <laughs> now, if they really wanted to go big, you go for the Diamond Collection. That's $129. I have that in my own wine fridge. I have several bottles not to brag. <laughs> That's delicious. These people are paying 10 grand a day. That is a $19 <laughs> bottle of wine. You go to fucking Ralph's. You can probably buy six of them. You get them for $9.99 each on that six for a Ralph's. Bro, have Whoa. you ever heard of bargains, bro? You know how you go to the, like, the warehouse. Like, I don't know. If, what, Trader what, Joe's, you get, exactly. like, seven yeah. seven bottles yeah. for four. It's I was worried you were going to bring up a grocery store from New Zealand. We'd have no fucking idea what we were talking <laughs> about. Or let's just say Walmart. Walmart, okay? Yeah. You're in Walmart, and you're about to go marry your girlfriend, and you go pick out a wedding ring. And you go to Walmart, what and the there's fuck? like a bunch of these rings. <laughs> I don't want. I, please take this in the right. spirit with it, which it's intended. Uh, no wonder you're divorced, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> he was never married. How could he oh, be divorced? Oh. <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, anyways, I, well, before I was rudely interrupted by Nick. Um, <laughs> at Dylan. least he got my name right. <laughs> She's Nick. Nick, can, can you just stay in your corner, bro, please? But you know what I'm saying? It's like, no one can tell the difference between a fucking diamond ring and a fucking... Cubic zirconium. Exactly. <laughs> or a, or a ruby. Know, I can't know, tell the difference between you know. a diamond and a ruby. Exactly. <laughs> okay, we have got... I, I wanted to ask um, last... last we're off on a tangent. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's we, what we do. We've got to get back to Bravo's Below Deck. So oh, the fuck, wind... That's what we're here for. <laughs> Is that what we are? The wind Sorry, comes... Sorry, we're here for Below Deck. It whips the sheets off the charter guests. Their bums are exposed, and they have to move indoors to continue with their massages. Kate says that these charter guests are absolutely immaculate, which made me wonder, and I wanted to ask you guys, how's Steve... What's he like as a charter guest? Who, who's Steve? Foam guy. The the uh, the first charter guest of this. Oh, the first Who? charter guest. Steve Who? the foam guy. What? <laughs> oh. Mr. Foam. Oh, oh Mr. Oh, Steve. Oh, yeah. Steve. Oh. 
Anyways, are you guys uh, saying port right now? Say port. Say port. port. Oh, port. <laughs> <laughs> no, port. no, Steve. Uh, anyways, um, let's okay, move on. Port, port. Yeah, port, port, port. Oh my God, <laughs> Steve. So what uh, could he have done? <laughs> what could he have done? <laughs> what could he not have done? Um, <laughs> okay, ah! what did he not do? Ah! 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 So I wanted. <laughs> hey, to- why is pets? Like, why is he so loud? Because every time oh, that's his. That's his. He's from Boss. He's from this (laughs) kind of filthy land in Massachusetts. I thought it was Nick, but anyway. Yeah. Um. Anyways, we (laughs) wait. Who's Nick? I I wanted to ask you guys. (laughs) Off the rails. You guys had a terrible job. You had to clean out the beach club so that these people could party in a different location. (laughs) Now this seems like a lot of work for nothing, really. And I I wanted to ask. Having been on the boat, do you guys think that this vacation is worth the money? Because we have talked about it, not ad nauseum, we've only done three podcasts, but I would never pay for this vacation. Well, um, if if it's a bunch of girls that are coming to this yacht, then yes, it's very, uh, you, you pay for your money. <laughs> but this um, isn't Dan Bilzerian. These are, these are old, weathered human beings who have a lot of money. <laughs> Oh, is it are, are you asking? The money? Is it is it worth the money for yes. them that they're paying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, you think? For he's sure. he's not going to insult his clientele. <laughs> Come on, you, well, you're coming to Tahiti on a fifty million dollar yacht. Yeah, you can dress Ashton however you please. You, you've got yeah. Cup, you got Cupid of the Sea. You got, <laughs> you got Captain Lee. You got Kate Chastain. <laughs> You got you got Josiah up and coming second stew. You got Ross. Um, they get a third spin. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where were your ranks again? <laughs> you got Ross. No, in all honesty, um, I think the guests got a very good deal on on their holiday. I mean, uh, you in Tahiti? I think there's not much explanation needed after the word Tahiti. Fair, fair. Uh, Tahiti is just incredible. Plus, you on a on this beautiful yacht. Like, why would you not want to be there? Somewhat of a non sequitur right here. Uh, are you guys familiar with uh, the the classic NBC sitcom Friends? Dun, 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 dun. I think you are. That, uh, uh, That's it. So, so we got, we got a rock. Did you ro- get that? I, I didn't even get the tune there. What, what was Ross I think trying you were, to hum? They were talking about the Friends. I don't think you're involved in this situation. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> this yeah. tune is Michael. Because <laughs> yeah. so, cause on this Clearly boat. Clearly I didn't recognize the tune. On this boat, we've got a Ross, we've got a Chandler, and, and we've Josiah. got a Josiah who could be considered Joey. a Joey. Joey. And then we've got Riley. With her nipples out, and obviously we love Rachel when she has her nipples out. That's oh, oh wow! Oh, boom. Holy cow! Oh, we never yeah. saw that. Coming. Do not one ever more. insult Rachel. Oh, sorry, <laughs> with sorry, I'm sorry for all the um. For fuck's sake! Sorry, I take that back. Yep. Come on, uh, Rachel is a beautiful woman. Yep. That- <laughs> and you want to compare her? <laughs> <coughs> Jennifer Aston, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. She is an ageless wonder. We oh, will she's say that. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, just like Captain Lee. Uh, guys, <laughs> we have, and I know Nick hates when uh, we talk about various gates, but uh, we've got Veal Gate to talk about. <laughs> um, Patrick is. Pat, do do you have something to say? Nick hates when you say gate after something that's not really a gate. Uh, remember, Watergate wasn't actually a, a gate. Just it was the name of the a gate. building. Yeah, it was Watergate. Right. So why are you still doing it? You're pissing Nick off. Yeah, it's Watergate gate. He, he's blood red mad. <laughs> this should just be called can Veal. We, can, can, we, I, can, can, we, can we get back to Baludic? I've got to say everyone on. should learn, and it's called out the gate. Out, out the, the gate. Out, out the, the gate. gate. So it means that... You know, someone that's holding themselves in, and then when they get loose, they're out the gate. A bit like Chandler, on, uh, a bit like uh, Ashton on the first episode. I tend yeah, to get yeah. out the gate when I get a couple yeah. drinks in me, actually, as well. Yeah, yeah, me and too. I've been known to fight. So talking I- about gate, out the gate. <laughs> Classic Nick. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about Joe Rogan's podcast. He, he's one of the biggest podcasts in the world. But he, in his beginning music, it's, it goes, oh, no, it's actually, um, I'm sorry. It's WTF with Mark Maron, another large podcast. His theme music right in the beginning goes, out the gate. And no, it isn't. Boy. No, it isn't. It's Lock the Gate. It's from Almost Famous. Oh, really? A movie that he was in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, there you go. Jesus Christ. Well, there Pat, you go. do you have a clip? Well, Let's talk well, about hey, 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 it. Well, that's when Chandler comes in. <laughs> Lock the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Pat hit us with a clip. Boom. So tonight I made for you some veal scallops, which I rolled with a brie and asparagus. Oh, wow. 
on bacon, cabbage, and red wine. How did you come up with this? I knew you like bacon. Love bacon, but you know nobody had veal on their preference sheet. Well, you said surprise us. So surprise us with something on the preference sheet. I want to say how short is this guy's memory? How could you ever be surprised by what you wrote down days prior? That's right. absurd notion. Pat, do you have mm. thoughts? I do. Um, okay, so they said this. Uh, they said this couple's really nice. What is it, uh, Danielle and whatever the fuck? That beautiful. Name? Daniel and Alan. <laughs> Um, their charter before this one, the cook didn't even fucking show up. By the way, I would have asked for my money back on that one. Guys, you got to admit, it wasn't worth 10 grand a day on that one. No (laughs) cook even on this charter. Grenadine and oysters? Exactly. All right. So, (laughs) uh, again, I would say you got to, maybe, I don't know what the preference sheet looks like, but you should know you're not going to serve veal. Uh, if they put down certain things they like, just make them what they put on the list, dude. Veal is a touchy uh, uh, food, and I was uh, I was rather shocked that uh, they they walked that back very very quickly. It seemed like they had a massive uh, problem with eating baby cows, but they consumed it immediately after. He said, "I just wanted to surprise you guys." Yeah, um, uh, I have a little info on uh, the raising of uh, baby calves. Yeah, uh, go, go ahead. I, I did a little digging. I didn't know this. Um, it turns out calves are raised on milk formula only, mm-hmm. and they're usually slaughtered around uh, 18 weeks of age. So they don't live a long time. Often often also uh, chained and have the, having their uh, room restricted so as to not develop muscle and make the meat redder and tougher. And so I can see why veal is kind of a kind of a crapshoot when you're you're giving it to someone. So Ashton, you seem <laughs> frustrated. What's Ashton, going on? you're banging your head against the mic. What's going on, buddy? He's a bit sensitive <laughs> in the subject. Tell us. Tell you us. vegan? No. What's going on, Ashton? <laughs> like, fuck, look at him. You think he's vegan? <laughs> <laughs> Ashton, how many eggs? Protein. How many eggs do you eat 13. a day? Thirteen. That is too many fucking eggs. <laughs> no, it's not. There is no. You eat no thirteen such thing. eggs a day. Thirteen eggs. High cholesterol is a myth. So ridiculous. You know what? Thirteen look at eggs. How, look at how how shiny his hair is. Of course, he eats fucking thirteen <laughs> eggs a day. You can only get shiny hair like that when you what? eat thirteen. You don't eggs get a day. yoked without eggs. What is it about veal that makes you slam your head against a mic? Microphone. The thing is, I, I'm I'm watching this this episode, and there's people in this clip that don't even know what veal is, right? <laughs> and then fair enough, yeah. And then there's people that jump on Instagram that want to take Adrian on about not being Zen because he's eating animals. And I've had conversations with Adrian about animals being eaten, and take the time out to appreciate a different point of view and. I'll take this across every person's opinion about every single issue across below deck is there's always a second perspective. There's probably a third perspective. Don't be so ignorant. Dare I say a fourth? No, well, there, there Could probably there is. be a fifth? There prob- <laughs> no, there probably is a fifth and a sixth and a seventh. Don't be so ignorant and so arrogant in your own way that you think your own personal opinion is the only way that people see things and it frustrates me is people come across so strong in their opinions do on, we, soci- uh, on do social media we medias. need to read the bruce lee <laughs> <laughs> no i i will say i have to i wholeheartedly agree and i know you're talking about in the context of below deck but i think in today's society and the and the contentious america we have right now this could be applied to all levels <laughs> can, can i just say something the, the the okay there's a scene where i Push Riley. Let's 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 let's. Spice oh, it up you, a you, bit. you, you, you want to get? Uh, I, 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 I don't think it's. Is, is, is it the time? Should we? Is, edit is it the time? Right. I, I don't think it's time. Nothing uh, misogynist about I pushing wanted, a woman. No, I'm gonna no, be, no, the I'm thing gonna is, is that there's, there's 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 someone that comes into the room disrespectfully, aggressively, yelling at the top of her lungs, and I I and and it's it's hard for me to understand these feminists that that. I calmly push her out. I gently push her. I, uh, they act like I fucking throw this girl out of the fucking. No. I, uh, you, did you did nothing did wrong, you but I'm going to say port for you. Port, I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> All right, let's. Port. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Pat, what are you doing? Sorry, guys. Pat, what in God's name are you doing? I was enjoying that music. <laughs> You're um, about to take your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> you did an interview in which you said. It's not the worst thing to slap a woman now and then. As I remember, you said you don't do it with a clenched fist. It's better to do it with an open hand. Mm. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't love that. I haven't changed my opinion. You haven't? No. Not at all. You think it's good to slap a woman? 
No, I don't think it's good. You I don't think, think it's bad? It must, I don't think it's that bad. I think that it depends entirely on the circumstances and if it merits it. Yeah. Uh, what would merit it? Well, if you have tried everything else, and women are pretty good at this, that they can't leave it alone. Yeah? They don't they want to have the, the, the last word, and you give them the last, last word, but they're not happy with the last word. They want to say it again and, and get into a really provocative situation. Then I think it's absolutely right. <laughs> That is Sean Connery speaking to Barbara Walter. James Bond himself, if you have not Whoa. seen this clip, it is absolutely fucking hilarious, not because he is talking it? about such horrific didn't. stuff, but because it is so dated and he is so, so stringent in his belief that it is okay to hit a woman. And I will say, has he been old his entire life? He that has, looked like it was 30 years ago and he looked like he was about to die. He has been uh, 60 for 150 years. Let's talk about something that doesn't have a face, black beans. I have to say, black beans. <laughs> I have to say, if I'm on a yacht trying to get freaking naughty and like party and stuff, I don't want a black bean cake. That's going to get farty. <laughs> He just right? Has- True. True. Thank though. you. All right. So enough about beans. Um, we've got to talk about too much. Even uh, Chandler seems like he got the just the worst shift you could possibly get, putting everything back in the beach club until three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. Um, you, you guys are just catching Z's while he's hey, doing all this. If you stuff. want to see me to beat, fucking see you later, boy. <laughs> Hey guys, is that typical for the bosun to actually have to do menial task work until the early well, hours of the morning? That just shows you his work ethic. For him to send us to bed and tell us to go to bed and him to carry on with those duties that were like, oh, I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? Or, or or get a good night's sleep so you know what fucking, is it like, starboard or like, fucking... Uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying is... Hand that signals. <laughs> he, he had the option to delegate us those duties right instead he took them on upon himself and took those duties yeah, yeah and that sure. shows and that shows where that shows leadership he's yeah. like boxer in animal farm and yeah. i will work harder and but, he he's, yeah, he's sure. just a total psycho but anyway so let's move on to the <laughs> how next. did you get, how did you get to that conclusion what do you mean yeah that's what you guys are talking about let's go to the next morning uh, a lovely salmon plate gets put out it does look lovely a little bit of lemon capers uh, i'm a jew that is my favorite food um <laughs> We need to talk about the cave tour. Pat, hit us with a clip. <laughs> about my 2.15 for lunch. So uh, I don't think swimming's in the works okay. for right now. Um, you know what? It's 1 o'clock. If you guys are like 10 to 50 minutes, then yeah. that will be fine. Yeah, because yeah. of the swell, we just got to be cautious of that. So I brought snorkels yeah, if, if you, you guys, guys are... want them. <laughs> Sorry, well, let's just... Got it. How if you're a junior dickhead? I'm in charge, unfortunately, for you. Just shut up. Jeez, Look at me, short. I'm the captain now. Um, <laughs> some thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very annoying of Riley. Uh, when you're basically uh, given direction and someone's annoying you, t- hey, 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 I have a better idea. Uh, R- Riley was very annoying there. Uh, it looked like a dicey fucking situation. My nerves were fried just watching that. Uh, you're in this tender. It's called a tender, right? Tiny little boat. Uh, very large waves crashing up against a. Looked like a lot of rock and a lot of cave. That's the swell, like. that swell. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how bad was Riley being? How out of line was that young lady? Oh, I can't. Honestly, I can't give you a scale okay. between uh, <laughs> one and ten. Uh, I'll give um, you the what, scale. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nine no, and no. a half. No, no, no. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I am not gonna come here and talk down about Riley yes. because there's some things that you know that she she has a point. I am trying to get these guests on board. One at a time. So what happens is when you're trying to get these guests on, and there's a little bit of swell. Everyone's hyping up about this fucking, there's like reef the, the crashing in the rock. People when you are, say people are piping up, you, you're on social media, people watch it, and now they're hammering you for exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. So they're looking at, I don't know what the hell they're Are you watching the same same show? No. Well, well I, I want to say this. 
Oh, Obviously, you have dancing. five people that are middle aged and they're diving in the water. I know my people. I'm middle aged. We're well, pussies well, and we're let, scared of everything. They're losing there's, contact. There's, oh, there's no way well, we're well, getting well, in that well, water. Let, let me ask you this the guests want to go swimming. Mm-hmm. So, if the guests want to go swimming, do you think, by their judgment, they think that it's an unsafe situation? Ask me that. So, the guests want to go swimming, okay? They look in the water. If you look in the water and you see something that's unsafe, by your judgment, these rich people you, don't want to die. That's, li- that's my point, Ross. But I, I think the edit made it look like the water was scary. I think they used a lot of B-roll. I think that production crew was working against you, Ross. Full time. Uh, yeah, Full I know. Time. I thought they were my friends, but I can't trust them. <laughs> <at the laughs> Full time you know? overtime here. Because at the end of the day. It's I'm going to port time. you again. Ross, I'm going to port you again. <laughs> Ross, you saw the show. The swells weren't that bad, right? Exactly. Okay. They weren't that bad. You know, there was, um, it did pick up a little towards the end. I had informed the guests our ride to the cave was going to be a little bit rough. And that was instructed to me by the captain. He said, we've got um, these swells. They're going to be on our starboard bow. It's going to be a little bit rough. But on the way back... We are going to have. We're going to make up the time because going there, you you've got to take your time, right? Because yeah. you want to have a comfortable ride with the guests. Back to the boat, fast and furious. Exactly. So, Tahiti drift. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So edit ha- that out. That was a horrible joke. Yeah, exactly. no, no, it stays yeah. in. It stays, it stays in. <laughs> so can you keep quiet? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ross, 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 Ross. The most intense moment of this episode was pulling the people back up on the boat. The music cue was there. <laughs> okay. The swells are in the background. Okay. Okay, let me explain. Before the guests asked, they, they said, can we go swimming? Right then and there, someone had stepped on my toes. It's not her judgment to say... Obviously, she's worried about the time factor. It's not her judgment and her call to step in. I can judge that. I love at the end of all of it, you get back to the boat and you're just like, good job, Riley. (laughs) Yep, fair enough. (laughs) You know, because she's Riley, someone that you need to give uh, positive feedback to because that's a way to make her feel special. She's a Mustang. We get back to the boat and we've got a serious (laughs) cliffhanger because you approach Chandler and you say, what, Pat, hit us with a clip? Chandler, what's her name? Riley. She's just not cooperating. What's her name again? She can't take instruction. If I go on another tender ride, swap her out. Either you need to talk to her or I need to nip it in the butt. Let's let's get through this charter and we'll figure out what we need to do. Or how about you grow up here? Chandler's decision making puzzles me. It's fing frustrating. Definitely takes a lot for me to get rattled. You know, I usually give people the benefit of the doubt, but starting to lose it with Riley. This behavior can't be tolerated. Whew. Whew. Guys, this was a dramatic episode. I, I, I want to take us back to... <laughs> I want to take us back to the incident where they were drifting towards the rocks. Yes. In the tender. Yes. You need to understand that when somebody is assigned the role of skipper or captain on a tender... And you get assigned a hand, a deck hand. Yep. The role of the deck hand is to support the skipper or the captain of that boat. Ross was the skipper of. <laughs> 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 no, it's very similar to when Sonny Corleone questioned the Godfather in front of uh, uh, yeah, other people yeah. in Godfather One. Yeah, exactly. There, there should have been one person speaking on that boat, and it was Ross. Yep. When Riley was speaking, and since the show, I've done my Master of Yachts 200, so I've technically done my captain's license. That's like a black belt? The <laughs> Yep, pretty much. The, the information I would have liked to have heard from Riley in that instance where she was helping people on board is, you have guests in the water, there's a person three feet or six feet off your port bar, you got you you got you got six people in the water. The nearest one is six feet from your port bar. Give the captain enough information to understand where the people are in the water. What Ross wanted to do in that incident, in in, in that situation, was whoever was the closest to the prop, get them onto the boat, get him onto the boat, tell the others to stay clear of the props. Let me reposition the boat to a safe position. And then once the boat is in a safe position, we will then collect the rest of 
the people in the water. The, the, the main lesson that I think everybody needs to learn from this entire thing is just don't go in the ocean. It's too <laughs> scary. It's too goddamn scary. There's too many rules. He's not great at comprehension, Stakes Ashton. I picked too... up. Well, obviously, Ashton, what are you talking about? Obviously, you don't go in the water that much, do you, mate? No, I mean, I'm telling from your skin tone, dude. Yeah. I freak. What are you talking about? <laughs> what the heck are you talking about? Okay. We got to wrap this All show right. up, but I do want to ask pink Ashton pink one more thing. Um, I was yes. told to ask yes. you no. who won uh, the last bout between the All Blacks and South Africa. Oh, it, it hurts me. It hurts me. It really hurts yeah. me. We were having Say such it. a good time. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But we came very close, but New Zealand won it. The New Zealand won it. I want to ask you a question. Yes, yes, I want to yes. ask you a question. Fire it away. Which other team in the world comes so close to beating New Zealand? <laughs> Canada? Oh, that's tough because uh, I can't really think of anything. Uh, wait, <laughs> it, it, um, exactly, because there's only one nation in the world that challenges New Zealand, Japan, like, like we do. Is there? So is it? I'm. I, I know nothing about rugby, but man, I love a good rivalry. Are they going to play again anytime soon, or is it like we, off we, season? We, we will. We will play many matches against each other. And let me not take anything away from New Zealand. New Zealand are the the number one rugby country in the world. Very honorable right of you. They are. They are. And but, then there's number two. But but like I said, <laughs> there, but like I said, there's only one team that can quantify themselves as the number two to New Zealand. Oh god, and I'll, this and, is and sad. I'll, I'll I'll proudly say that that is South Africa. You shouldn't proudly say that. I don't know if and you've ever a, seen Talladega Nights, but there's a little saying: uh, if you ain't first, you're last. If you're not first, you're last. <laughs> we next kid. time. We we're gonna get them next time. Um. Yachty with the body, people's bosun. We cannot thank you guys enough nah, for coming on. Welcome to back anytime. Now, Honest- your furrowed brow uh, suggests that you have something else to say. Oh no, I just this is one of my favorite Agreed. episodes. I like these fucking guys. I'm gonna go out and party with them after. Leave you two fucking here staring at each other. All right, not okay. So, um, anyways, I that's could go with if I wanted to. Show. I have to do more work tonight. Um, uh, I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Nick say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat say goodbye. Bye, dudes. Ross, say goodbye. Ashton, say goodbye. Later. Goodbye. Kelly Slater. Later.